The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to St. David's Morning Worship for this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Please uh, do join in the singing and the prayers wherever you are able so that we might worship together this Sunday morning. We begin by praying, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect Prayer for this Sunday. God of Miriam and Moses, you are our help from age to age. Accept our worship, our living sacrifice, and transform us by your Spirit, that, being many members of one true body, we may dare to pray together in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. And now we sing together, Glory to God. readings this morning are from Exodus chapter 1 verse 8 to chapter 2 verse 10, Psalm 124, Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 8, and Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to 20. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. 
And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The story of Moses in the bulrushes is a staple of Sunday school curriculums and children's Bibles. And those who haven't been in church for decades still remember that Moses' mom hid him in a basket on the side of the river. Perhaps that's why the baskets we use for newborns are still referred to as Moses baskets. Even the more structured bassinet, such as the one I slept in and my children did too, is designed with a basket weave. And they help us remember the story. The basket Moses' mum made, though, was pretty rustic compared to anything that we have now. It was made from papyrus, and plastered with bitumen, which is a thick molasses-like uh, oil product similar to that which is found in our Alberta tar sands. And it's also coated in pitch, which is a gummy plant resin. So the bitumen and pitch combo would make that basket pretty waterproof. Moses' mum and the other Hebrew people at the time were slaves in Egypt. The Egyptian king, or pharaoh, <clears throat> wanted their labor, but he was also afraid that there were too many of them. So he decided to suppress any rebellion before there was one. And part of that strategy was to force the Hebrew midwives to kill all the baby boys. But the midwives were courageous and cagey too. They told Pharaoh that the Hebrew women were so strong that they gave birth before the midwife could even arrive. One of those mothers was Moses' mom. She hid him for three months uh, after he was born, but as he got older, it became too difficult. And so she decided to place him ingeniously in this ingeniously des uh, designed basket down in the reeds by the riverbank. This was no random choice of location. She knew Pharaoh's daughter and her attendants often came to that spot to bathe. Moses' mom also stationed her older daughter Miriam nearby. And when Pharaoh's daughter saw the basket and after her maid had lifted the lid, she saw the baby. At that moment, Miriam popped out of hiding and offered to go find a wet nurse. Yes, do, said Pharaoh's da daughter. And so Miriam went to fetch their mum. Pharaoh's daughter then offered to pay the woman to care for the child until he was weaned. When he was old enough, Moses was taken to the palace and raised as Pharaoh's daughter's own son. I want you to notice how courageous and clever all the women in this story are. The midwives dared to pull the wool over Pharaoh's eyes with their tale of vigorous births. Moses' mom risked hiding her baby for three months, 
Then she designed a very secure basket, which she strategically placed, and then she instructed her daughter Miriam to be on location. And Miriam bravely appeared at just the right moment. Thus, Moses' mom managed to get paid to keep her own baby healthy and safe. Pharaoh's daughter was courageous in her own right, too. She ought to have reported the baby or at least drowned him in the river. But instead, she went against her father and she adopted this baby, one who her father would kill. What amazing women who each do what she is able to do and all the while unaware of how God will ultimately work through this baby to save all the Hebrew people. I love that this story highlights how an oppressed and powerless people can and do work to ensure their survival and that the key players are women who in that culture had little status or voice. Notice how they each did what was within their own ability to do. Yet it is through the combined efforts of the midwives, Moses' mom, uh, Sister Miriam, Pharaoh's daughter, that the baby is saved. If any one of them failed to act, Moses would not have lived. And none of them knew beforehand how God would work through Moses when he grew up. They only knew that here before them was a life to save. Most of all, and most of the time, that is all any of us knows. Here before me is a life that needs to be saved, a person who needs to be loved, comforted, supported. And each of us has the opportunity to act within our own sphere of ability. St. Paul says, we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Each one of us has passions, talents, creativity, ingenuity, and God needs each of us to act within our ability. No one is useless within the body of Christ. All are needed, for it is together that we show God's faithfulness and love to the world. When each one of us does what we can do, the Spirit pulls it all together and God transforms lives. In the Gospel reading, Jesus tells Simon, you are Peter, a new name meaning rock. And he goes on to say, on this rock, I will build my church. We think often, wow, Peter must have been so special and talented. In fact, Peter is lacking understanding, which we will see next week, and ultimately he's full of promises he can't keep. What makes Peter a rock is nothing special about Peter. Rather, the fact that Peter has hung around Jesus for three years means he has stories to pass along. Peter, like the women around Moses, will one day be courageous. Courageous enough to stand up and do what he's called to do, simply to share God's life and love as they have been made known in Jesus. Through Peter's actions and his words, you and I come to know how much God loves us. Peter will tell how God willingly came as a vulnerable baby who would grow up to embody God's love. And through the cross, Jesus will save more than just the Hebrew people. Jesus will save all people from slavery, slavery not to a Hebrew not to an Egyptian overlord, but slavery to sin and death. And in response, out of gratitude, we offer to God our lives, our very selves, to bear witness to the one who gives life. St. Paul calls this our spiritual worship. 
God gives us the opportunity each day to engage in simple and courageous, loving and life-giving words and deeds, that in the end all may come to share in God's life and love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to Jesus, our Lord, who ever lives to make intercession for us. Savior of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence, and pain, and bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, empower by your Spirit all Christian people, especially our Bishop Jane and all who gave leadership in our local churches. And empower the work of your Church in every land. Give us grace to proclaim the Gospel joyfully in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and all who serve this community 
and those on whom we depend for our daily needs. We remember particularly those who are working towards opening up our schools and those students and families who are making difficult decisions. Grant that we may all seek the peace and welfare of this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great Physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness, and peace to all who have asked us to pray for them, for all who are suffering with COVID, for all who are working in long-term care facilities, and for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Conqueror of death, remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. And we give thanks for the life of Charles Pickett and pray for his wife Dorothy, his son David, and the remainder of their family in this time of sorrow. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God this day. And now we join in singing as our Saviour taught us. say together, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>